I'm not finished with something, um, and you'll understand it better as I get into this tonight. I uh, I woke up yesterday morning, and uh, around 4:30, the Lord began to deal with me about this, and uh, I thought I was through talking about this, but I guess I'm not until after tonight. We'll see where it goes from there. But um, I know that I'm going to read some of the stuff that I have here. I know the 2024 total solar eclipse is past and it's over. And most people just want to forget about it and move on to the uh, next thing. And uh, many with their heads stuck in the sand as if it didn't mean anything. <laughs> and, uh, but the meaning of it and the reason for it is not over. It passed. But the meaning of it and the reason for it is not over. <clears throat> I don't care what the naysayers may have said or may say. This was definitely a warning sign from God for the nation of America to repent and turn back to God. And I'll, I'll uh, add two more words or else. I really believe that. There's too much evidence for anyone to say that the 2017 and 2024 Solar solar eclipses were not signs from heaven that the end is near and that they were both warning signs to America that she must repent and turn back to God. It's not time to forget about it and move on. It's time to respond to it. And if we want America to survive and thrive in fulfilling the God and fulfill the calling that God has placed on it, um, we better respond the right way. And by the way, the Bible says the gifts and callings of God are without repentance. In other words, they're irrevocable. I believe that's for individuals. I believe it's for churches. I believe it's for nations. If God has a specific reason for them, I do believe with all my heart that America is here for mainly two reasons. Um, and that's to get the gospel around the world and to stand by Israel. And But America, as you know, the... Well, I'll just have to say it's, there's been so much backsliding. Uh, that's so much ungodliness, so much darkness that's in this nation now. And that um, it has ran this nation for some time to a certain degree. So I want to share with you one more message about the 2024 total solar eclipse. Not because I want to keep talking about it, but because God woke me up early yesterday morning. And he gave me some specific things that I feel like I'm supposed to share with you tonight. So if you've got your Bibles tonight, if you'll look or you can look on the wall, either one. I'm reading from the uh, Amplified Classic on this first passage. In Genesis chapter 1, in verse 14, it says, And God said, Let there be lights in the expanse of the heaven to separate the day from the night. And let them be what? Signs. And tokens of God's provident care and to mark seasons, days, and years. <clears throat> I'm going to read down through, I guess, maybe uh, verse 18. It says, And let them be lights in the expanse of the sky to give light upon the earth. And God made the two great lights, the greater light, the sun, to rule the day and the lesser light the moon to rule the night. And he also made the stars. And God set them in the expanse of the heavens to give light upon the earth, to rule over the day and over the night and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good, fitting, pleasant. And he approved it. He said it was good. God said it was good. But it, the first thing that he said, the reason he put the sun and the stars up there, we know it was to give light. But he said it was for a sign, for a sign. In Acts chapter 2, verses 17 through 19 in the King James, Acts chapter 2, 17 through 19. And it shall come to pass in the last day, says God, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy and your young men shall see visions and your old men shall dream dreams. And on my servants and on my handmaidens, I will pour out in those days of my spirit and they shall prophesy. And I will show wonders in heaven above 
and signs in the earth beneath. In Luke 21, verses 25 through 28, I'm just giving us a scriptural uh, setup here for what, what I'm uh, going to share with you in a minute. Luke 21, 25, it says, And there shall be signs in the sun, in the moon, in the stars, and upon the earth the stress of nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring. Men's hearts failing them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth for the powers of heaven shall be shaken. And then shall they see the son of man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. And when these things begin to come to pass, then look up, lift up your heads for your redemption draweth nigh. So he put all this together. When he was talking about there in verse 25, he was talking about there's, there, you'll see signs in the sun and the moon and the stars. And then he started talking about um, men's hearts failing them for fear for things that's coming on the earth in the last days. And then he went on and said, didn't you see the son of man coming in the clouds? So we know that these are signs of the end times, right? And as I said, there's too many people that just uh, ignored that. And even people that used to would, there was, I remember one person, and I'm not going to call any names, but I remember one person that was back before the election last time uh, prophesying a certain way. And it didn't appear to him that, that it turned out that way. So he just pretty much just went off the radar apologized and went off the radar, which um, I don't, I don't think he missed it personally, but he thought he did. And, uh, but he, he's back on the radar to some degree now. And he was just right the opposite of the way he was before saying that there's nothing to this kind of stuff. And uh, pretty much, you know, uh, just trying to just write it off as nothing. And then uh, I know someone else, I read a, a little thing that they were saying that, you know, um, well, the prophets missed it again. I don't know what they're talking about on that one because I don't know who, who if, if somebody prophesied Jesus was coming uh, Monday, well, they probably shouldn't have prophesied that if they did prophesy that. Yeah, they shouldn't have because no man knows the date or the hour that's going to happen. But, but to, to prophesy concerning um, the end times and the signs and all of that, that's right on. They didn't, they didn't miss it if they did prophesy about it. Uh, they, they didn't miss it because I believe it's going to happen just, well, I believe it's going to happen just the way the Bible says. And these particular signs we're talking about, uh, the end times and the, and the coming of Jesus. Uh, the, the signs in the sun, the moon, and the stars, and a lot of other different things. Um, and one of them said we need to stop following the signs and the signs need to be following us. Well, both is right. We need to be following the signs, <laughs> seeing what the signs are. But the yeah, the signs need to be following us according to Mark chapter 16 and 17. Signs and what, um, miracles, healings, uh, casting out devils, all these things. Yeah, those signs need to be following believers for sure. But we don't need to be ignoring the signs. So I want to talk a little bit about that. What is a sign? And what are signs for? What is a sign? And what are signs for? In the Greek, a sign is an indication, uh, especially a supernatural indication, uh, a miracle sign, a wonder, and an unusual occurrence. Uh, when you see an unusual occurrence in the heavens, it's a sign. I've, I've seen others besides just the sun and the moon. Uh, I have never had the Lord speak to me any clearer than he did on a Monday evening uh, two or three years ago when I was off on a, a dirt road headed back here coming from another place um, and headed, actually headed to Ladies Fellowship here on a Monday night. And I saw a rainbow and some things that went with that and some things the Lord showed me right there. I knew it was signs in the heavens. There was no doubt about it. And uh, it's, it's, you're not being superstitious or weird or crazy or anything like that. No, he said that we're to see signs and signs are to be read. They're to be paid attention to and to follow the signs. Amen. 
So we're to see the signs and we're to pay close attention to them. Now, I was traveling, Gayla and I were traveling back this past March, a year ago. We were going to Brother Mark Hankins down in Alexandria, Louisiana to a minister's conference. And we were going right down, we were on a highway going right down through the middle of Louisiana and I wasn't paying attention to the signs. And uh, I was probably listening to somebody preaching or something. I don't know what I was doing, but I was driving. I know that. And the speed limit changed as I rounded a curve. And there was a guy standing there with a handheld radar looking at me and, and just grinning, looked like. But nothing happened immediately. He didn't even stop me. But a few days later in the mailbox came a little piece of paper. And I realized then that I should have been paying attention to the signs. But it was too late and it cost me. We need to pay attention to the signs. It may not be an immediate effect if we don't. Oh, I didn't see anything really happen Monday as a result of the eclipse. That doesn't mean it wasn't a sign that I was supposed to be paying attention to. Uh, the little bit I did get to see it, it was beautiful. Uh, you know, it was something that I won't get to see again until I'm 80 or 81 years old. And, uh, and I would probably have to travel to North Dakota, South Dakota, or Montana to see that. And I probably won't do that. <laughs> but anyway, uh, it's these signs, whenever they come, we need to pay attention to them. Because they, they can cost us. These signs are, are meant to show us something. And we need to pay attention to what they're saying. Things may not happen on a particular day that maybe we think uh, they could or would or should. But just as sure as the Lord said in his word that certain things would happen around certain times, when you see certain signs, get ready because they're going to happen. Maybe not right when you got it figured that they will, but they're going to happen. And he said from the beginning that he created the sun and the moon for signs. And he said that we would see signs in the heavens, in the sun, moon, and the stars. And another thing is he said, we'll see signs on the earth beneath. There's things on the earth that are signs. Um, some things that happen in the Bible on the earth that were signs. The Bible said were signs. Um, in Deuteronomy 28, 45 and 46, the curse of the law was a sign from God. That obeying the law of God was a must. And if, if they didn't obey it to the T... They were under the curse of the law. It said, moreover, all these curses shall come upon thee and shall pursue thee and overtake thee till thou be destroyed because thou hearkenest not unto the voice of the Lord thy God to keep his commandments and his statutes which he commanded thee and they shall be upon thee for a sign and for a wonder. And uh, then Jesus himself, what did he do? He came and redeemed us from the curse of the law, right? Well, himself, our Redeemer from the curse, he was a supernatural sign from God. And it wasn't a usual occurrence. It was a sign. How many people do you know that have been born of a virgin? One, Jesus, that was supernaturally conceived from the Holy Ghost, right? Only one, Jesus. And it says in Isaiah 7 and 14, prophetically speaking of him, it said, therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. And it says, behold, the young woman who is unmarried and a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and he shall call and, and shall call his name Emmanuel, God with us. In Luke 2 and 12, in the Amplified Version, it says, and this will be a sign for you by which you will recognize him you will find him after searching a baby wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. Jesus was a sign himself. The wise men actually followed and or found Jesus by following a sign in the heavens. In Matthew 2, 7 through 10, Herod, when he had privately called the wise men, inquired of them diligently what time the star appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, go and search diligently for the young child. And when you found him, bring me word again, and I may come and worship him also. It says, and when they heard the king, they departed, and lo, the star, the star, which they saw in the east and before them, till it came and stood over where the young child was. They followed the sign in the heavens. 
right? It was a star. The, and then I said earlier, you know, that, you know, we're to be following signs, but signs are also supposed to be following us. They're signs on the earth. And I quoted that scripture there in Matthew uh, in Mark chapter 16. These signs shall follow them that believe. By name they shall cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They drink any deadly thing that shall not harm them. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. And it goes on the next couple of verses and said that these signs follow them. Right? So signs are signs that must be paid attention to. So when we're talking about this eclipse, um, Sister Evie was helping me with this and uh, giving me little information I'd asked for on it. Um, and we were thinking, well, I was talking about the difference in a, um, a lunar eclipse and a solar eclipse. And I was thinking, uh, giving it some thought because I had these eclipses on my mind the day before yesterday. And I was just thinking, how does all this work, you know? And I was thinking, you know, in a lunar eclipse, which is uh, uh, at night, uh, an eclipse with the moon, I was thinking about, you know, well, the earth has to get between the sun and the moon to make that. And it has to be on the dark side of the earth on full moon and for it, for you, for it to be able to be seen, you know. And, and then I was thinking about when a solar eclipse is different, the moon has to, you know, and it's the earth's shadow on the moon, the sun shining around the earth to make a lunar eclipse or couldn't hit the, the moon if it was a full eclipse. Uh, but then the solar eclipse, it was right the opposite. The moon got between the earth and the sun. And, and Sister Evie was sharing with me that, um, which, you know, it's a, it's a lunar thing because it's, um, it's, it's on the uh, calendar that has to do with the, mon m the moon. And then the, the solar eclipse is because it, it has to do with the sun. And it's, uh, it's, it's, a, it's just a different thing all the way. But I was thinking about the total solar eclipse happens when the moon comes between the earth and the sun. And it casts a full dark shadow as it moves across the region or a nation. And it is a total eclipse only through a narrow strip across a nation or an area, wherever it's at. And I was thinking about that. And I was thinking about this, how, what a sign. I mean, only God could make that happen and the one in 2017 come this way and the one in, in uh, 2024, seven years later, this way and make an X right at the heart of the nation. And, and it and it be so many things right around there that happened uh, that, that were there, you know, like the, the cities of Nineveh were close, uh, one or two of them were the the, the little township or whatever called Rapture was right there. The Ark was right there, all right there at the crossing, you know. Uh, only God can make all that happen. I was, I was listening to some of the news commentators about this thing, and I was uh, watching it whenever it said, you know, it's, it started down in Mexico, and then it, when it came across Eagle Pass, and, and it was showing the next little town up, I believe, and how it got dark there. And then Tyler, Texas, a man was standing there with his microphone talking, and and all of a sudden, it was, I mean, the sun was shining. It was broad daylight. One minute later, it was dark, like night. It was amazing how that happened. I heard one of them say, this shadow, you know, it only covers so much. It didn't cover the whole strip at one time. It was moving, you know, because it would get dark here for three or four minutes and here two minutes or whatever. And it was moving. It was on the, that thing was moving 1,500 miles an hour. The shadow was. And... uh it was, it was pretty amazing. I don't know how, how long it was this way, but it was what? One person said it was 130, another said 200 miles wide. It was a big one. That was another unusual occurrence, this uh, eclipse was. But anyway, there was a lot of interesting things in it. But then, I, as I said, I was thinking about the, the two solar eclipses from 2017 and 24 and the X that formed across the heart of America. They were definitely, to me, warning signs um, for the United States of America. It was not just a show. It wasn't that God wanted to put us on a show. Seven years is the number of completion. And I believe God gave America from 2017 to 2024, this is my opinion, a space of seven years to repent. I'm not saying that it's over, so that she hadn't repented. Um, and that, uh, but I believe this last uh, eclipse meant repent and come back to God. I believe it was a call uh, for, for God. And I believe that the 
the, it being a, a total solar eclipse, it's kind of, it was like where America could be headed if it doesn't turn back to God quick. Because the eclipse itself, as far as a sign, it was where darkness completely put out the light, basically. And we don't want that to happen in America. And, but it was, a, it, was a, it was a show that came right across the heart of America. Where, uh, I mean, if, if you were under that, you know, if you were in that little area that, um, where it went across, there was a time that you couldn't see the sun. The light had it completely, I mean, the dark had it completely covered. That shadow had it completely covered. And the Bible tells us in Isaiah 61, it says, Arise and shine, talking about, um, which it was, you know, it was speaking to the people of Israel then, but uh, today, speaking to the church, it says, Rise and shine, for your light has come. The glory of the Lord has risen upon you. And that's what the church has got to do to change things. We've got to rise and shine. We've got to get up. It says, Darkness shall cover the earth and gross darkness the people. And you say, Well, why? Why? You, you think America is the only nation in the world? I've heard people say stuff like that, too. No, it's not the only nation in the world. But for some reason, these two eclipses happened seven years apart right over America and the way it crossed America and the way it crossed right in the heart of this nation. There's, there's a, and, and the, I, I may get ahead of myself here, but there's just so many things that just, well, it said, I haven't checked the map, but it said it in 2017 um, that that eclipse shadow passed right over or very near seven either cities towns or neighborhoods called salem and i was thinking about that and uh, the salem it, it means peace it means peaceful it means um, an early name for jerusalem salem um, and you know back in 2017 america was really i mean it wasn't perfect by any stretch of the imagination but it sure was a lot better off than it was seven years later. I mean, COVID hadn't happened. A lot of things hadn't went backwards as they have. It was pretty peaceful then. But, you know, we, we had a time there. And it was, a, it was a time that we could call Christmas Christmas. And the leaders would call Christmas Christmas. And there were some good things going on. Some things were headed in the right direction for this nation. But then America made some choices and things changed a lot. And things began to get dark. And it was said that the eclipse of 2024 passed directly over or very near seven cities, towns, or neighborhoods by the name of Nineveh. And we know that Nineveh has to do with Jonah and the, and the story in the book of Jonah there. Um, Nineveh makes the 2024 total eclipse, in my opinion, a very specific prophetic warning. That didn't just happen that way. You couldn't line up seven cities or towns or neighborhoods by the name of Nineveh and this shadow come over it. I mean, only God and, and the way they, they crossed and made the X, that was just amazing only God could do it. And, and it, it had the perfect curve to take in all of those. And you know, even one of the signs of the earthquake, uh, of, the, of, the, of the times is an earthquake. And you know the earthquake that, that happened there in New York, New York. And what was the name of that uh, White House station? Was the, was the name of the actual place, the spot where the epicenter of that earthquake was at last week? Now, how did all this happen? You, you can't explain all this away. I'm telling you, it was a prophetic warning from God that America better wake up. Amen? I look in the book of Jonah, chapter 1. God told Jonah, go to Nineveh. Warn them. Warn them. Judgment's coming if you don't repent. Jonah just kind of stuck his head in the sand and ignored what God said and went the other way and he wound up in the belly of a whale or a great fish. Chapter 2, in the belly of the great fish, 
he repented. Jonah changed his mind. I think I would have too, wouldn't you? <laughs> he, he repented and he was thrown up on dry ground by the well. Then in chapter 3, he went and did what God told him to do. And guess what? Nineveh repented. What if the church did what God told us to do? Think about that. What, what about it? Now, I pray for America, but I'm just going to stand right here and be as honest as I know how to be. I prayed for America a lot back during COVID and I prayed for, and, and during the election, but I don't pray for America like I should be praying for America. I have not, I'm being honest with you and you don't know how you say how much is enough. I don't know where enough's at, but I don't believe I prayed enough for it. I, I, I believe that for the most part, and I'm going to tell you, we can't expect people in Washington, D.C. to change America. It's going to be God. It's going to be a revival. It's going to be from God if it happens. It's going to be supernatural, just like these signs are supernatural signs. Um, it may be some changes made with people in, in Washington that will aid in that. But I believe first, though, we're going to have to pray we're going to have to have a lot of prayer and a lot of spiritual warfare in sincerity. I'm talking, I'm not talking about playing about this and just maybe thinking about it and not even praying 15 seconds a day for this nation. I'm talking about getting down to business and doing, and there being much prayer and spiritual warfare. I believe it's going to have to happen. I really do. Um, in Luke chapter 9, verses 29 and 30, it says, And when the people were gathered thick together, he began to say, This is an evil generation. That's where we're at right now. It's an evil generation in America. They seek a sign, and there shall be no sign given it, but the sign of Jonah the prophet. What happened to Jonah? That's a sign. What happened to Jonah and Nineveh? That was a sign. That's an earthly sign that took place. It really happened. He said, for as Jonah was a sign to the Ninevites, so shall also the Son of Man be to this generation. Jesus is the answer for America. And there's no way around it. It's not any other gods. It's not going after all these gods of, and of education and, and uh, popularity and money and um, all this, all these sexual sins and all this mess that's going on. That's not, that's not it. It's Jesus. Jesus is the answer. There's so much stinking idolatry in this nation. It's crazy. It's, it's weird. Um, and they think we're weird, but no. So Jonah's message is a sign to this nation today. We have got to, we have got to wake up and not just keep talking about it. And not just thinking, well, that'd be a good thing to do. No, we've got to do it. I said, we got to do it. The 2024 solar eclipse, uh, yesterday morning, this is where this, me this message that I'm sharing with you came from. And here are the words that I believe the Lord spoke to me yesterday morning. That's why I'm preaching on this again. That's why I'm talking about it tonight. Around 4.30 yesterday morning, I, uh, I got up and like many people, I just kind of turned my phone on and it wasn't an 11 on there, it was about 4.30. And what, Gayla? <laughs> I thought she was making fun of me about my 11s back there. No, I'm joking. Anyway, it read on my phone headlines on the weather channel said generational solar eclipse captivates America. And when I saw that something went off in me, I read it and I believe I heard the Lord speak to me and say, America saw it as a sight and not as a sign. America saw it as a sight. I mean, people were paying huge money for hotel rooms right under the shadow of that eclipse all across America. 
and just, you know, coming, some people were coming from other countries to get under that shadow. It was a sight instead of a sign. America and even much of the world, don't, don't think for a minute that the world's eyes are not on America and what's happening in America. Um, the, the, the world's involved in so much with what's happening in America. But anyway, America and other countries saw this as a sight and not as a sign. America saw it as a big wow and a big wonder and not as a big warning. That's what it, and, and then just got in their cars and went back home, stuck their head back in the sand. Not even thinking about it as a sign. I feel like the Lord spoke that to me yesterday morning. I never, I wouldn't have thought of that, but it, it just came. And then spectacular, uh, spectacular things that happen in the heavens with the sun, moon, and the stars are meant, as I said, by God to be signs that people are supposed to pay attention to because they're often warning signs. I mean, if you're going down a road and a bridge is out, and there's a sign that says bridge out. You better pay attention to it, right? We better pay attention to it. Here's what I believe the Lord spoke to my heart at 430 yesterday morning. And uh, you can agree with it or not, but I believe this is what he spoke to me. And I, I, I wrote it down. If America doesn't wake up and repent, darkness will totally take over the light of this nation. As the dark shadow of the moon completely covered the light of the sun in this total solar eclipse. It's headed that way fast. It's already eclipsed big time. And I'm talking about a total, total solar eclipse. This is not a case of rah, rah, whatever will be, will be situation that we're living in. People think that, well, it's just going to be what it's going to be. It's just, you know, it's just going to be what it's going to be. I know perilous times are coming in these last days. I understand that. The Bible tells that and you can't prophesy that away. You can't declare and decree that away. That's going to happen. But as far as America fulfilling what God put it here for, that can happen. That should happen. And we've got to do something. God has a major plan for this nation, but if the people of God do not wake up and pray and go to war in the spirit realm against the power of darkness, this came to me now, this nation will essentially forfeit its purpose of existence. And you may not agree with me, but this is what I felt like I heard and it will die. But if it does, I believe that it will die only to rise again. I just don't want to have to see it go to that because I believe that this irrevocable call that's on America, it's, it's going to still be there. Um, I believe uh, that the sleeping giant America, which has a major call from God upon it, will come back to life and fulfill its destiny, uh, destiny on planet Earth should the Lord tarry. When the church does awaken and, and prophesies that these bones come back to life. I was reading Ezekiel 37, one through five, and I believe this could apply big time to America at this point right now. And, and the thing about it is we should catch this thing where it's at right now and turn it around and not wait for it to die. It's eclipsed already big time, but it's not a total eclipse right now. The Bible says darkness shall cover the earth and gross darkness to people. It's, it's, it's eclipsed big time. Uh, there's so much darkness. I don't know what percentage it would be. I was looking at the, through the clouds and the little holes there Monday and able to see a little bit of it, uh, the eclipse. And when I first saw it, it looked like it was about a 90% eclipse. And then we begin to watch it as it waned down to back to the, you know, the sun, uh, the full. But I don't know what, to what percentage America is eclipsed with darkness right now. But I would say it's probably a big one, a great percentage. And I don't want to see it go dark. I, I don't want to see it die. I'm a citizen of the kingdom of, of God. But I do, I do love America. My human body was born in America. And 
As far as the earth is concerned, I'm American through and through, and I trust that you are too. My family is. This is where my grandkids are now growing up. And I don't want to see this nation die. And that's why we must pray, we must fast, we must declare, we must decree, we must get into spiritual warfare for this nation. We must prophesy, just like here in Ezekiel 37. The hand of the Lord was upon me. And this particular passage was talking about Israel and its state. And the, the state it had gotten into. It said, the hand of the Lord was upon me and carried me out in the spirit of the Lord. And set me down in the midst of the valley which was full of bones. And he caused me to pass by them round about. And behold, there were very many in open valley. And lo, they were very dry. And he said to me, God spoke. To Ezekiel and he says son of man can these bones live and he wasn't asking him that because he didn't know he knew they could live he asked him that to see what his response would be and locate him where his heart was where you are you willing to do something about it and that's kind of where we're at God I believe is asking us do you believe these draw dry bones can live he knows they can but are we willing to pray the price are we willing to fight the fight? Are we? So he said, and I answered, O Lord, thou knowest. Yeah, God does know. But again, he said to me, prophesy unto these bones. Well, I'm not a prophet. Well, he's not talking about the gift of prophecy. He's talking about speak the word of God to these bones. There's life in the word of God. The word is life, right? He said to me, prophesy upon these bones and say unto them, O ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Before I read the rest of that, y'all, we can't stick our heads in the sand and think that the way things are is just going to go away. Or it's just going to change on its own. Or it's just going to get better on its own. Y'all, it's not. We're living in the days the Bible says perilous times shall come. But that's, that's talking about the whole world. But where we're at, as far as the destiny of this nation, we can make a change in the shape of this nation. We can make a difference. And the problem is we can do it now knowing that we need to. Or we can just say, well, I'm just going to play it out. See what happens. Just ride it out and watch it die. We better do something. I said, we better do something. I do know this. God's going to take care of his people's trusting, period. Regardless of what happens to this nation. But I care about this, this world. But I'm going to be honest with you. If it gets dark, dark, dark in this nation... I'm believing that the harvest is going to come running to Jesus out of desperation. I really believe that's going to happen. But I believe God can heal this nation and the nation can get up and be what it's about this world to be. Go and reap the harvest. Stand beside Israel. Do what it's put here for. I, I, I firmly believe that. So he said again, he said unto me, prophesy upon these bones and say unto them, O ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord unto these bones. And he said, speak the word now to the bones. And say, thus saith to the Lord, to you bones, behold, I will cause breath to enter into you and you shall live. We need to be prophesying to America this very thing right now. We need to see the signs and realize that it's important. It's important. We see the need to really get down to business and pray, but we're just, I, I believe we do see the need, but we just haven't done it the way we should have done it. But we've got time. I believe, I believe it's a sign from Jonah. You know, Jonah told him, said, you got 40 days. Now I'm not saying we got 40 days. I mean, that, by no means. I don't know how, what, I don't know how many days we got to do what, to be honest with you. But I just think we need to be doing what we know to do. Right? We, we must. 
Uh, there's got to be extended, extensive prayer and warfare in the spirit for this nation to survive. There's got to be much prophesied, declaring, decreeing, and speaking life over this nation. There's much binding and loosing that has got to be done by the church. And I believe that we have a sliver of time left to make a difference. It must be made. And if we will, he will. He said in 2 Chronicles 7, 14, 15, If my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. And what does verse 15 say? When we get to that place, he said, now mine eyes shall be open. When we get to that place and mine ears attend unto the prayer that's made in this place. There's been too much stuff though. He said, turn from their wicked ways. There needs to be revival in the body of Christ. There's got to be a coming together in the body of Christ too. Um, just an example. Um, a lot of people were downplaying people that were talking about what we're talking about tonight. They were downplaying that. And I've heard, I've heard people that, and I'm, I'm sure we've all done this at one time or another, but I've heard people that, that I really trust say things like just kind of downplaying some of the information that I've, I've given here tonight. I, had, I heard one say yesterday that they're saying there was seven Ninevehs. He said there was only two. But you know what? I, if the Lord had shown him what he showed others, he would not have been downplaying it. He would have been displaying it. You know what it is? It's called competition and jealousy in the body of Christ and even behind pulpits. Say amen. <laughs> it's the truth. And uh, the Bible talks about in Ephesians chapter four that we got to all, when we all come into unity and that's why we need to be here on Sunday mornings. One reason I felt like, listen, this is not time to compete. It's time to complete. It's not time to compete I said, it's time to complete. It's time to be complimenting each other instead of working against each other. We got to be in unity. That's where the blessing's at. That's where the favor of God's at. That's where the power's at. You know, on the day of Pentecost, they were that many people in that one room and they were all in perfect unity in one accord and the Holy Spirit came. We've got to be in unity. We cannot be jealous that's why we need to. It's one reason I feel like it's so important that we bless other ministries. Because the enemy temp, tempts us all to be jealous. We got to fight against all this stuff and get our love issues settled so we can get in unity and move forward. And God can use us. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Now, I, this came to me too. And I'm, I'm not going to be able to get all to all of this, I don't think, tonight. But I was thinking about... When's the last time I actually cried out to God for America? I'm talking about cry, shed tears. When's the last time I did that? Or have we ever? Have we ever? Think about it. How many times? Often, you know. And I was thinking about it in Psalm 107. It's four times, I believe it is, in that one chapter. It says, then they cried unto the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them out of their distresses. And it's, it's a good chapter to read about that. It's a lot of things that were going on and were going wrong. And they, they were in trouble and they were distressed. It said, and then they cried to God. They cried unto the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them out of their distresses. You know when a person will cry? It's when it hits them in the heart. When it becomes a heart thing. When somebody's heart gets broken for something. Then they'll cry. 
And the Bible says that God is nigh to them that be of a contrite spirit and a broken heart. Have a broken heart and a contrite spirit. God will move. There is nothing that God will respond to any more than that. I know a lot of times people say God doesn't respond to crying. He responds to faith. This says he responds to crying. I can tell you there, there's been a couple of times in my life, in my ministry, that I got desperate to the point that I was crying. And God didn't respond to my faith at that moment because it was weak. But I saw him miraculously respond to my tears and my broken heart. Just like you would for your child. We got that from him. So I just want to encourage you. Cry out to God. Ask God to break your heart for this nation. In Isaiah 57 and 15, it says, For thus saith the high and lofty one that inhabiteth the eternity, whose name is holy. He said, I dwell in the high and holy place with him that is of a contrite and humble spirit to revive the spirit of the humble and to revive the heart of the contrite ones. God will revive America if our hearts will break for America. Amen. I got to say it. I know I was joking a little while ago about my 11s. But for you that may not understand, for about seven or eight years now, everywhere I've looked on timepieces and road signs, 11s, 11s have jumped up in front of me everywhere I looked so many times to the point that I got so tired of it. I just wanted to please don't let me see another. Can we take that out of the number system? You know, but uh, I mean, it just it got that big with me to the point that. Definitely, I started trying to figure out what in the world does 11 mean, in which we, I believe 11 means the 11th hour, which is right before midnight, which is, biblically speaking, the midnight hour when Jesus comes. I believe, and, and biblically speaking, uh, the number 11 was often right around chaos and disorder, and it means chaos and disorder in the last days. It also means a time of transition. And I believe we're about to transition, the church is, from, from earth to heaven. Um, it also has to do with judgment. And uh, anyway, on, the, on Monday night, <laughs> the last hour of the day of the total solar eclipse, uh, the last hour of that day, Monday, I done gone to bed, done been asleep, I don't know how long. And all of a sudden I woke up, woke up, and I just looked over my phone and guess what it was? 11-11. After several times during the, that day, on the day of the eclipse, that number popped up on my phone, on the stove, in my car, on the clock. I just saw it several times. And I don't look for that. I promise you, I don't look for that. I don't seen that so much. I know I don't look for the number 11. But it was just popping up in front of me everywhere. And then last Sunday, um, this past Sunday, when I was preaching, you know, about the, the end time signs and I was bringing this out, at, I woke up in the middle of the night and I just want to know what time it was. I looked at my clock and it was 2.11. I went back to sleep and I'm thinking, well, my clock's going to go off at 4.30. I wonder how close it is. I just looked over there and my phone again, it was 4.11. I get ready to walk out the house to come to church and I run back in there to, to um, get my little glass and glasses cleaning cloth out of my nightstand to clean my glasses before I left. And I had my phone with a light on to, to see that. And I looked at my phone, it was 6-11. I get to church and when church is over, I'm looking back there at that monitor and I'm giving an altar call and 14 people are getting saved and it's 12-11. So good things are coming out of things. But anyway, as I was, as I was paying attention to all of this biblical meanings and, and all that comes to, to, to represent there, it was all leading up to this. And it was just saying to me that, that times are urgent. This is the 11th hour. Y'all, it's, it's almost over. We've got to pay attention to the signs. The, the things we're seeing, they're, they're end time signs, even in the earth. He said, 
he's talking about when you see these signs, you see these things. They asked Jesus, what shall be the signs of the end time? He's talking about things on the earth. We got to pay attention, y'all. And we need to do everything we can. It's our place. The Bible tells us in Timothy to pray for the people that are, that are in charge of a nation. Pray for the nation. Pray that, pray that everybody will be saved. That's the answer to everything. So let's, let's pray and let's believe God for this nation. I, I encourage you. As a matter of fact, why don't you stand up and I want to I wanna just take a moment and, and close in a prayer for the nation tonight. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. God, we, we come to you right now in Jesus' name. Lord, I know that some of this that I said here at the end is kind of comical. But Lord, this is all very, very, very serious. Lord, I thank you for the signs. I thank you for giving us warning signs. Lord, I know that in the natural, we go down the roads and we depend on signs as far as where we're going, whether we're looking at signs on our phones or the road signs or whatever. We're, we're looking at signs. We need direction. We look at signs for speed limits. We look at signs for hazards, for warnings. We need to see the signs. And more than seeing the road signs, we need to see the signs in the Spirit. And I believe that you have spoken through this, these solar eclipses. You've spoken directly to America. And Lord, I pray for America right now. Lord, as a nation on this earth, I love America. I thank you for it. I thank you, Lord, for allowing me to be born here, raise my family here, to be blessed here in the most blessed nation on the face of the earth as far as I'm concerned. I, I don't know of anywhere in the world I would rather live than right there on that little hill that you gave me and my family. I thank you for Gill's Hills. I'm grateful for it. And it's in America. I feel like that little spot was, you made it for me and for us. And I know that all of us in this room probably feel the same way about the places you blessed us with. Father, I'm grateful that I don't have to get permission to preach the word of God. I'm thankful that we didn't have to hide tonight. We didn't have to, to meet secretly to be able to pray and Lord, we, we don't have to be quiet about it. We can go out there and tell other people just like you told us to about Jesus. We can go out there and pray. We can go pitch a tent and have a revival. We can go out there and just represent you just like the way you told us to. And we don't even have to, we don't even have to think about somebody picking us up at this point and, and taking us to jail for that. But Lord, I know that it, it could come to that if this, if this nation gets much darker. But Lord, I am just grateful for America. And Lord, I'm asking you for a turnaround tonight. We're asking you for a revival in this nation. Lord, I know there's been, there's been fits and starts and stops and, and get going and, and hit the brakes. And Lord, I know that like the Asbury revival, Lord, that was something that it was major. It took place and then the brakes got put on it. We got to go on with our school. We got to shut this down. We got to move it out of here where the Lord started it from. Lord, I know that there's been so many good things that have happened that we have stopped. And we ask you to forgive us for that. And Lord, I pray too for the church, the body of Christ, that the body of Christ will come together in unity. Or we're supposed to be one. We're not supposed to be jealous and in competition with each other. We're not supposed to be thinking, I'm a big I and you're a little you. Lord, we're supposed to be preferring others above ourselves. We're supposed to be walking in love. Our love issues are supposed to be settled. We're not to have any awe in our hearts against anyone. We're not supposed to be um, have offense and unforgiveness and roots of bitterness and resentment in our hearts. Father, I pray that you'll just create in us a clean heart, O oh God, and renew a right spirit within us so that we can effectively pray and do spiritual warfare to the, to the extent that we can make a difference. 
that the body of Christ will come together and that we will pray, we'll seek your face, we'll turn from our wicked ways. And we'll turn to you and we'll call upon you and we'll pray. And you said if we will, you will. Lord, I pray that you, I pray, Father God, that somehow you'll wake up the body of Christ before it's too late for the body of Christ to save America. But Lord, I know though that the body of Christ, I know, I know that you're going to take care of us. And, and I believe, Lord, that you're going you're gonna to save this nation. And I believe, Lord, that to whatever extent the bones are dried, you're going to bring them back to life. And we're going we're gonna to focus. And we're going to finish what we're here for. Lord, just as, as uh, Robert Hunt and the guys, when they parked the ship at Cape Henry, there at Virginia Beach, and they came out on the, on the sand and they stood that cross up in the sand and you spoke prophetically through him. You said, from these shores, this gospel shall be preached across this new world and all across the whole world, all the way around. Lord, we believe that was a prophetic word from you. We believe that is the call on this nation. So Lord, we lift this nation up to you right now. We pray for revival. We pray for repentance. We ask, Lord, that you will give America repentance a change of heart, a change of mind, a change of direction. Give us repentance, Lord. Thank you for it. And we declare tonight, we prophesy to the bones of America. You will live. Thus says the word of the Lord, you will live. Live, dry bones. Come back to life. Start shaking. Start rattling. Come back to life in the name of Jesus, you dead bones. Come back alive spiritually. Take us back to that place, Father, when the people in the White House were prayer warriors, were real men and women of God. When the people that were in the Capitol were prayer warriors, real men and women of God. Bring us to that place, Lord. Revive this nation. We speak Jesus. To America. I speak Jesus to America. We speak Jesus to America. Thank you, Lord. We declare and decree that Jesus Christ is Lord of the United States of America and that America will live and not die and declare the works of the Lord in the name of Jesus. We declare and decree it. Come on, say it with me. America will live and not die and declare the works of the Lord in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord God. We love you, Lord. We bless you. We honor you tonight. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, I want to say thank you that we have ears to hear what the Spirit's saying to us. We see the signs. We pay attention to the signs. We obey the signs. We follow the signs. And the signs follow us. Thank you, Lord. We'll see signs and wonders and miracles and healings and salvations. People coming by the droves out of the harvest fields into the kingdom. Thank you, Lord. We call the people of this nation out of the darkness into the marvelous light of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. We're, we're people of the light and not of the darkness. And we're calling the people in the darkness. We declare that the people, the gross darkness of this world is coming to the light of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Has anybody else got anything you feel like you need to pray about this nation right now before we go? Anyone else? Anyone? All right. Thank you, Lord. Whatever head bow and every eye closed. Is there anybody here tonight you don't know Jesus is your Lord and Savior? You want to receive him before we leave. Anyone here? Anyone here? All right. I don't 
don't see anybody. Just, just in case this is on the air and somebody needs to accept Jesus. Hey, it's worth it if it's just one of you. The Bible says if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart, God raised Jesus from the dead, you'd be saved. We, nobody can pray or believe for you, but I can lead you in a prayer according to that scripture. And you can pray it out of your mouth and believe it with your heart. And the Bible says you'll be saved. Then you'll be ready to just move forward with him in that new life, that new life that you'll get. Hey, he'll become your sin and you'll become his righteousness at this moment. You'll be born again, a born again child of God, off the road to hell, on the road to heaven. You get to spend eternity with Jesus in heaven. Pray this. Y'all can pray it with me. Lord Jesus, I ask you to forgive me for all my sins. Come into my heart. Be my Lord and Savior. I believe you died for me and rose again to give me eternal life. So at this moment, by faith, I confess you, Jesus, as the Lord of my life. And I believe with my heart that you've forgiven me. You've written my name down in the Lamb's book of life. And I'm going to spend my eternity in heaven because I'm now a born again child of God. In Jesus name. Amen. And amen. If you pray that and you believe it with your heart, I know it seems very simple, seems too easy, but Jesus did the hard part and he did it for you and you just accepted it if you believe it. So live for him. Get in the word of God for yourself. Get in a good Bible, believe in church. Get baptized, get you some good faith buddies and get out there and bring others to Jesus, okay? God bless you. Thanks to all of you for being here tonight. Y'all, what we just did, that was not a little thing.